It's just the UK, three videos of time. Just gonna be uh, starting out in this area. And it's also the area we're gonna end on in the next video along. It's the, we're on still on the lower peak forest canal, which attaches to the Ashton. There's an um, interesting set of lock gates. Lock system, lock gate system goes up over a mile. So we're gonna film that. When you get to the top of those, it's the upper peak forest canal, which leads to well, the peak forest. Those were facing. But that will be a separate part of the canal because today we're going to film the locks and also go down and show you where the Macclesfield would start. So it, it's just the next section along. Don't want to go too quick because the Macclesfield, upper peak forest, and lower peak forest plus the locks are five separate interesting parts of canal history. So stroll on and just get some of the nice views. Yeah, I finished uh, filming last year in this area. I just was about to attempt to do the locks and we had one of the hottest, driest summers probably on record. And it got so hot, it was a case of traveling on the public transport as well became something of a pain. That's the best way of putting it. Um, water levels were low in the canal and it was just uncomfortable. 39 degrees walking around with no water and stuff. So I decided to leave it till this season. And this is our first pleasant day. So let's get the uh, aqueducts and some of the locks. So the Peat Forest Canal will then lead on so you can follow the rest of the Peat Forest Canal and other canals. But the reason I do follow canals is to try and explain how human beings have changed in the last, say, 250 years, how the world's changed. And I always say well, canals are the start of that, but I don't want people to imagine goods coming along with the canals. What I'm saying, the canals are the start of that. They're the first engineered structures. They're the first designs that we came up with to make the world faster and more efficient. And to come up with a kind of production line way of living. It's the first signs of mass production, mass transportation. It starts with canals. Before that, things were very, like, well, much slower. So the reason I've been filming canals, it helps me explain history in that way. Because I wouldn't be able to film the mobile phone, for example. I wouldn't be able to use BARD to write scripts for me. Um, it's, an age is, um, I usually say it, it's a scientific age, or a silicone age, microchip age. But really, it's a, an age of discovery, but the discovery of ignorance gets bigger and bigger. Where, say, a Spanish peasant has so fallen asleep in AD 1000 and woken up 500 years later to the din of Columbus sailors guarding the Nina Pinta and the Santa Maria. The world would have seemed to them quite familiar, despite many changes in technology manners and political boundaries. <clears throat> uh, this is medieval Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Would have felt at home. You know, even after 500 years, not very little had changed. But, say, someone fell asleep at Columbus time, into a similar slumber, and woke up 500 years later to the ringtone of the 21st century iPhone, they would have found themselves in a world of strange, well, a world so strange it would be beyond comprehension for them. Uh, in this heaven, they might well have asked themselves, or oh, perhaps, are they in hell or heaven? The last 500 years, you've witnessed this phenomenal and unprecedented growth in human power. That's what's happened. In the year 1500, there were about 500 million homo sapiens in the entire world. Today there are 7 billion estimated increasing. The total value of goods services produced by humankind in that year, 1500, would be around $250 billion in today's money. Nowadays the value of a year of human consumption is close to $60 trillion. 
for that's how much things have grown just in 500 years where there was not much change before that. Remember that you consumed about 13 trillion calories of energy per day. Today we consume about 1,500 trillion calories a day. If you take a second look at the figures, human population has increased 14 fold, production 240 fold, and the energy consumption like 115 fold. Suppose a single modern battleship got transported back to Columbus time, for example. In a matter of seconds, it could make driftwood out of the Nina Pinsa and the Santa Maria now. And then sink all the other navvies of all the other armies worldwide. You know, without even taking a scratch, you might get a dint off a cannonball. As we can see, we close that little bit of section. As I finish there anyway, people very much live and make their lives along the canals. Uh, it's very different for its traditional use, of course, it was a working institution. But it's a way of life these days. Still get from place to place as well. So it's still useful. Warm well, enough already. So let's make it clear that next video you'll see this one which is says unused footage will end on the hottest day of last year but run concurrent with this because of the sun we'll get some consistency all right so i'm here to film some of the uh, marple aqueduct mainly and the locks uh, modern fighters have taken on board poly cargo the whole world's merchant fleets could hold the modern computer could easily store every word, a number, and all the codecs, books, and scrolls in every single medieval library with room to spare. Now we've got AI that can write poems. Not brilliant poems, but it can write poems. Any large bank today holds more money than all the world's pre-modern kingdoms put together. So in 1500, cities had more than a thousand inhabitants, very few had that. Uh, most buildings were constructed of mud, wood and straw. A, th a three-storey brick building would be considered a skyscraper at the start of the Industrial Revolution. It was dirt tracks, dusty in summer and muddy in winter, uh, plied by pedestrians, horses, goats, chickens and a few carts. The most common urban noises were human animal noses that's it. So the cityscapes were black at night if you looked out over the horizon. If an inhabitant of such a city could see modern Tokyo, New York or Mumbai, what would they think? But the single most remarkable and defining moment of the past 500 years came at 5.25 on 16th of July 1945. At that precise second, American scientists detonated the first atomic bomb. At the um, Alamo Gordo in New Mexico. From that point onward, humankind had the capability not only to change our course of history, but to end it. as I've said. The canal history helps us explain that not so long ago we weren't using mathematics for example up until Isaac Newton. Most things were in written form. Uh, most people just believed in the Bible. Anything else was like sort of heresy. So you sort of had a complete system that worked and you didn't need explanations of say for example how a spider spun a web. It just said oh, God tells the spider how to spin a web, don't worry about it. So things went along like that for a very long time. <clears throat> so mathematics is the first big change in history with Isaac Newton because we start to talk or explain things in a numerical form, which leads up to the atom bomb. It also, at some point, 
250 years ago, the first canal goes into place within the 500 years period of you know, the world that we live in today. The Peak Forest Canal was built in the late 18th century. Uh, of most canals were to interlink the major rivers which link to the oceans and the docks such there's many a lot of docks. Um, Great Britain actually has a great history of a navy fleet and trading via the sea before aeroplanes and everything. So the canals were to link everything together, all the towns, and then lead down slowly to the sea. That's why they have lock gates. Most of them lead down. They'll get to the highest point and have, you know, that's where they store most of the water. And they'll lead down one side or down the other side. Even the Panama Canal works in, in that way. Peak Forest Canal. Let's get back onto it. It's uh, to transport limestone, and so they don't pick, they used to break on the horses and cart, obviously. So you can make these limestone little ornaments, trinkets, from the quarries of Derbyshire, and transport to Manchester pretty much unbroken. So it was a major engineering feat. It played a vital role in the development of the Industrial Revolution, which changed the world. Navigation is 14 miles long. It climbs over 1,000 feet in elevation. It was built using like a, all different types of methods because it has tunnels, uh, they have to put aqueducts in which hold water. So it's like uh, a viaduct or a bridge, but it has to be waterproof. Uh, lock gates, which are explained further down, so we don't go into everything. Uh, they can, so all these things are invented though, it's an engineering, how do we do this, let's go and let's start to do this and come up with a solution to the roads which were basically not any better than when the Romans had left them, they were now in ruin, they did a better transportation system than horses just dragging things through the mud. Uh, it starts at Bugglesworth Basin, the basin as we've seen, it's a large reservoir. It's the, the southern end of the Peak Forest Canal. It's the highest point, but it's the southernmost point. It was built to provide water for the whole canal system, so that's the highest point, as I've said. It also served as a mooring point for boats. So really, it's like a canal is it's kind of a slow river with lots of flat sections. It's filled at the top, it flows down towards the sea like rivers do. So the, that's the basic of how they work. Some are completely level, some of the early ones. I think Liverpool Leeds Canal is completely level and we'll go into that one day we'll a video about Leeds and Liverpool Canal. Yeah and it's like 100 miles long but it'll travel like 400 meters, where another canal could go 100 meters and then have a lot more. And it also has fascinating things, including this tunnel. Next video in the playlist should start with Bugsworth Basin, that's the plan. Then we'll have seen the Macclesfield and at this point this is where I was on my approach but I decided to do the intro as I walked up the hill so it makes sense as we get to the end of this fascinating tunnel which is also part of it. I've been up to the top and there's like a church over the top and I'm not really sure of the history of this tunnel. I'm not sure if it's a culvert, I think it might be part of the original structure. Just interrupt, uh, change the narrative there, because I just get mesmerised sometimes, I'm walking along, it's like a little snippet of how it used to look before it all changed, even the houses are just a little, say, can we call it a culvert, corner? 
it's just like you step back in time all of a sudden it just hits you well it hits me anyway it's one of my favorite parts about walking on canals which i have to do at least once a year to keep my sanity it's like going back in time just listen to it but i don't think it's the end of homo sapiens just yet so it's just a a historical truth that I'm not sure everyone's aware of. I love shocking facts like that. It makes you really understand how time has changed. Um, so, in the beginning, in the main title, I'm presenting history. The idea is to explain history, not just walk on canals. But you have to understand and travel through the old areas and how they changed, and then you get it. You start learning different languages, and then there's this school in the middle of a field, and they're like, oh yeah, that used to be where the old road was, and you have to, it all changed in the last 250 years, from what, what it used to be around. Uh, but the next stage in the continuum of physics to chemistry and biology, us sapiens are subject to the same physical forces and chemical reactions and natural selection processes that govern everything, all living things, everything in the universe. How angelic you might believe you are, which I don't. I think there's very strong evidence to just prove that we are one of a species of this planet. And it is like you do just suddenly appear. And this is um Massive viaduct bridge. So you can imagine an old steam train having to go over that. So they're having to build it to get over the canal. And of course, keep the railway as level as possible. But uh, we're going to go through a tunnel now. It's a well known tunnel, part of the great uh, canal mania era. I mean, it's a well known tunnel. It's called Woodlay Tunnel. Originally you would have had to push yourself through this bridge on a canal barge and hopefully there's no one coming towards me and probably I call the navigation I'll try and find out a bit of history about that obviously a canal or a waterway is called a navigation as well and that's a viaduct crossing over We'll go through this tunnel. But I don't want to get into great debates. Let's just say uh, we've played a much larger part. We've had a much bigger playing field than it has given to any other organism. That's a good example. But the field has still had its boundaries. The implication has been that no matter what their efforts and achievements, sapiens are incapable of breaking free of their biological determined limits, which is what forces fight, uh, science forward, sorry. But the dawn of the 21st century, this is no longer true. Homo sapiens, as a species, are transcending those limits. It is now beginning to break the laws of natural selection, replacing them with the laws of intelligent design. So whether you believe in intelligent design or not, we are actually creating intelligent design around ourselves. So yes, um, Isaac Newton is very much leading into the modern era. So without mathematical forms of explaining science or how things work, it would have been extremely difficult to build canals. So measurements, you know, it might be, um, there's very few equations, for example, uh, graphs and calculations in the Bible, uh, the Quran, the Vedas, or the Confucian classics. The book was a uh, principle mathematica that Isaac Newton brought forward, and it's a way of relating numbers into scientific forms, so we can explain how things actually work. Okay, at the time, people would have thought, why is he doing that? There's absolutely no reason to do that when we understand things. So, a good example of before measuring with numbers, as in milliliters, um, a pint 
so it's in a written form. That, so a measurement, an English measurement of beer was a pint. You, you, you used to have um, things like a score, that, that's 20. And the reason for all this is because you didn't have the written format really to measure things. Uh, like we, we saw the pub, the navigation, which proves the pint and the tradition of the pub probably predates the mathematical principles. And then the canal comes along and it's called the navigation because it became more successful from the people building and working on the canals. So the navigation as we went past does have an important link to the canals. And we can explain how mathematics actually got brought in as a popular format only just 250 years, 300 years ago as other people start to understand it. Yeah, so like humans are caught between different forces, um, a good force and an evil force in you know previous texts before, like around 500 years ago. Uh, there's no mathematical formula you could use to predict human choices. You know, you couldn't quantify the respective strength of good and evil. You can never calculate the force acting on a man or a person is equal to the acceleration of their spirit divided by the mass of their body. <laughs> but do you understand how mathematics now is the formulas we're using? It does pretty go way back actually to Greece where they started a similar system. And of course, mathematics and science are ever changing. There's no exact number that is actually correct, which is a fascinating thing. That's what I'm talking about, time and history. I'm trying to combine the two. I suppose it's physics and history, but it is important because actually measuring time hasn't always been done with a clock. And we can do it by just studying history, if we relate it properly. Uh, 19th century scientists came across a few observations that did not fit well with Newton's laws, for example. Um, theory of relativity and quantum mechanics are two separate theories that argue against each other still to this day as well. So we do rely on numbers, but they're, not, they're just as imperfect as the other explanations in the past. The introduction and explanation that I've given of the Peak Forest Canal from the Bootworth Basin was actually written by an AI uh, computer model which was created by Google, it's called BARD. So I simply typed into BARD can you help me write a script for my YouTube channel so that where I'd be, how long I wanted the script to last for and it came up with that in about 20... now that would be exaggerating it came up with the whole thing in under two seconds I'd say so just to actually put it together, write it, give it me back all within say two to three seconds which I found quite amazing <coughs> and Echo. to get to that point this is the latest thing it's not perfect but it is a genuine AI artificial intelligence that can help you complete tasks and think for you very quickly which is a fascinating evolutionary quirk shall we say so I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I'm going to let Bard send us out the AI program Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this vlog, please give a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Once again, thanks very much for watching. So that might possibly be the first time anyone filmed that tunnel in one take. I can see why, because I was falling all over the place. I'll have to adjust the filter because it's too dark in here to film the outside. And we can travel on. It's pretty slimy. <laughs> Very dark. There's no point using like a filter when you can't see anything. Been concrete blasted, but it would have originally been here for whatever reason. 
as I've explained. Just the UK, brief videos of time. <laughs>